Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about eight really useful things that I use in my winter running to make it that little bit easier to help keep me warm, dry, stay safe and most importantly keep that motivation high during those darker winter months. So if you're the kind of runner that struggles as those nights draw in and the temperature drops then stay tuned because we're going to be solving all of those problems for you. And also at the end of the video I'm going to be going through the exact outfits I wear at different temperatures as well. So let's have a quick chat about shoes. Now my favourite winter running shoe when things get a little bit wet, a little bit slippery is the Nova Blast 3 Trail Edition. The Nova Blast 3 is a fantastic shoe and it's just added a lot of extra good grip on the bottom of the shoe. So a fantastic lightweight option there. Another one I've used in the past is the Nike Pegasus Shield which is just adds a little water repellent layer over the top and also I really like this when it gets a little bit colder because they just add a little bit of extra fabric inside just to keep your feet and your toes nice and snugly warm and also my favorite race shoe when it gets a little bit damp is the Nike Vaporfly 3. The grip on the bottom of this shoe is fantastic for a sort of a wintry wet weather shoe and it's just a very very fast shoe. This one is a little bit smelly we'll put that over there because I've been using it in all of my winter training as we get ready for Valencia. Now a lot of people ask me about Gore-Tex shoes are they worth that little bit extra compared to regular shoes and yeah they are pretty good but don't get me wrong, if you go walking through some deep wet grass out on the trails or go through some deep puddles, your feet are getting wet, whatever you do. They're definitely not like welly boots. But if you're going out in some sort of light drizzle and a little bit of rain, then they will without doubt keep your feet a little bit drier than the regular shoes. Now, if you did want to check out some Gore-Tex shoes, I've just made a little list on my notes here. So we've got the Hoka Clifton Gore-Tex, the Brooks Ghost 15, Nike Infinity Run Gore-Tex Edition, Asics GT 2000. They're not shoes that I've used, but but they are definitely worth checking out for those Gore-Tex versions. And yeah, when shoes get out and they get really wet and stinky and horrible, you probably want to rotate them. They're going to take a little bit of extra time to dry, stuff some newspaper inside, put them on a windowsill, a little bit of an airing cup if you have that sort of option around. Now it's so important to stay safe, be seen. You can buy from Decathlon just a little red light to put on the back of your shorts or on your pack if you're out on the trail or something like that. Just clip it on and it's just going to mean everyone can see where you are. Moving on, I just want to have a quick chat about this safety skin um, thing here. Now you can put this all over any exposed parts of the skin if it's not too cold. I love running in shorts, kind of whatever the temperature. So I like to put this on my legs as I go along. Any sort of car lights, any street lights, your legs just light up and it's all about being safe be seen so yeah we'll put the link to that down below now head torches again it's that time of year where loads of people ask what head torch am i using well i use two different ones but they both come from a company called petzl we'll link to both of these uh down in the description there will this one turn on yeah oh it's flashing orange i need to charge that one both these completely rechargeable by usb just regular usb i think basically i use the little petzl bindi for my all of my sort of runs in london around with a little bit of street lights but again it's just about being seen by everybody out there and yeah this is my trail running head torch this is around about 100 pounds for this and this is around about 35 pounds for the bindi i've got both of these from centurion running here in the uk oh, they look quite cool <laughs> lighting me up like that And all of a sudden we are outside because I've got to head out on my run. And this is the hardest thing for a lot of people is getting out the door and finding that motivation to run in the winter. So can we buy that? Is there anything we can spend money on? The most important thing for me is getting a race in the calendar. For me, I've got Valencia in December and then another race I can't talk about yet in February. And that's gonna keep me getting out the door, getting fit and getting my workouts done. Now for a lot of people, they won't fancy a marathon, but for a race like a 5K or a 10K, you don't need to do quite so much training the workouts are a little bit shorter, so that can be a good option to get into your diary. Another option I like to do is I subscribe to a audiobook platform and I will only listen to my audiobooks when I'm out on my run. So it's a nice little treat for when I do head out the door, I can catch up on all of my stories. I won't listen to these in the flat or anywhere other than when I'm on my run. So if I want to catch up on them, I've got to head out the door and go and get it done. Now, of course, there are some free things we can do. Meeting up with a friend, getting that same time, same place every week to get you out. You're not going to miss it. If 
if it's in your diary or equally getting down to your local run club every week. Park Run happens at the same time every week on Saturday mornings and for a lot of people in the UK there's a great organisation called Good Gym where you can meet up, do some good deeds and also get your runs done as well. All of those are completely free options so check them out. Right I'm going to have to get my run done and then it's back inside to all about gloves. Right, moving on, let's have a chat about gloves. Now, a lot of people know me for my famous pink gloves. I suffer with Raynards, so my hands get very, very cold very, very easily. So they keep the wind off my hands, uh, but yeah, they're from Ron Hill. One thing I really sort of don't like to recommend is waterproof gloves, because I just find most of the time your hands will just overheat so badly and they're just not very breathable. What I do like when the weather gets really bad is waterproof sort of mitts, like uh, basically like this. this. These are from Montaigne. So you can have a regular glove. So yeah, let's just, for example, use these pink gloves here. And then if the weather gets particularly bad, you can just use that as a liner and then just have this to keep your hands nice and dry. And once it gets down to about two degrees Celsius or below, I'm using these Montaigne prisms. These are lined with loads of, uh, like a sort of a down light material, but it's not down. But these are incredibly warm. They pack down fairly small and I'll be wearing these throughout the winter months without a doubt. Right, jackets, probably what people ask me second after what gloves am I wearing. Now there's two things you really want to have been having a look at, waterproof jackets and sort of your regular windproof jackets. Now let's start out having a chat about waterproof jackets. There's two things you want to look at here, either the Schmerber rating or the hydrostatic head rating. Now I'm not a real expert on waterproof jackets, but the higher the number of those, the more waterproof it's going to be. So if you're going out for about an hour or something, that's kind of the maximum of your long run. There's something around 10,000 is probably gonna be all right for the majority of your interview doing. If you're going out for a lot longer than that, you wanna be looking at 20,000 plus. If you're gonna be spending a little bit of time out in the trails, out in the mountains, something like that. Now for me, I only wear a waterproof jacket when it's actually raining. I'd much prefer to go out in a windproof jacket. I find them obviously far more breathable. But yeah, the modern waterproof jackets that I use, I've got the, the Gore Shake Dry Jacket from Salomon and also the Montaigne, I can't remember the exact one, we'll put that up on the screen. Now I really recommend getting a long sleeve top to wear underneath your running jacket. They just help absorb that sweat under the jacket and just help the jacket from avoiding contact with the skin and prevent that boil in a bag feeling that you can get. Now of course we do sell these amazing long sleeve tops on the website so feel free to check those out. The next item on my list is a wrap. Now, there's so much you can do with this. Most people just put it round, I'll take my cap off here, just put it round their neck to keep their neck nice and warm or you can put it over your face like that. Just really good at keeping you nice and warm and insulated. So versatile, some people like to put it around their wrist or you can just keep it on your head and use it as a headband. <laughs> to, my hair is crazy long at the moment, sorry guys, I need to get down to the hairdressers. To protect your ears like that as well, which I sometimes like to do in a combination with a hat as well. Now beanies can be good, again we make these on the website, we'll link to these down below. I don't tend to wear these unless the temperature is dropping below zero degrees. But yeah, really nice and lightweight, but it's got to be quite cold otherwise you do kind of overheat a little bit. I prefer to wear beanies sort of for a short recovery run, about 30 minutes in the evening. I tend to take a beanie out with me. If we're going any longer than that, then I'm just taking my regular hat and just sort of protect my ears with a buff. Now my final recommended piece of essential winter running gear is to get yourself a really good quality running hat. As soon as it starts raining, a really good long peak like we have here will keep all of that rain out of your face, out of your eyes, and it makes running a far more pleasurable experience. And at the start of the video, I said I would chat about all the gear I wear at various different temperatures. So we're about 10 to 15 Celsius. Not a lot really changes for me. I've got my regular shorts on and I'm just wearing a long sleeve uh, regular running top there and that is about it. That's going to keep me nice and warm and keep that sort of wind off my arms if it gets a little bit colder. When we are getting a little bit colder, 6 to 10 Celsius, this is when I'm going to put a windproof jacket on at this sort of level. I'm still going to have my shorts and I'm probably going to have my pink Ron Hill gloves um, on there as well. So long sleeve top, regular windproof jacket and gloves for me as well. Nought to five, guess I'm getting a little bit cold now. Not really enjoying life as much. I really do much prefer running in warmer conditions. But what are we gonna be doing here? Well, I'm gonna get my leggings out probably at this sort of level. Um, long sleeve top, windproof um, jacket, probably going down to my bigger gloves now, so getting the Montaigne prisms out. 
and then having a buff around my neck as well. Now below zero, yeah, this is getting a little bit unpleasant for me now. So yeah, I'm probably gonna be having to be taking a beanie out with me and then having the buff around my neck and then obviously my maximum uh, Montane gloves. Some thicker socks as well, get some specialist winter socks. Mine I get from Stance, really good keeping the feet nice and toasty warm there. I'd love to know what all of the, mainly our American friends do when it gets down to a far, far lower than this. Um, someone like Mike running in Chicago. I cannot even get my head around how people can run in those sorts of temperatures. So please let us know your best running gear, best running outfits down in the comments. It'd be great to catch you there and chat everything winter running. So that's it guys. Loads of information there to help you with your winter running. Next up, we have me running in the worst conditions ever when I completed an ultra in a storm. So enjoy that video and we'll see you very soon in the next one.